Welcome back to the castle. Now, in case you are new here, let's do a little bit of catch up on what I've been up to. Following the instructions for this LEGO set, I am building my own castle that will look like this, except 8,000 times the volume. That's 20 times larger in length, width, and height. Overall, I think it's going pretty well. I've had to design every part from scratch. I print them out, usually in several pieces. I put those pieces together into a single part, and I assemble the parts together to be the castle. Well, I've been printing out new pieces to be turned into new blocks so we can put those blocks onto the castle and make some good progress today. Before I get to more building though, there's a bit of an apology I have to do. In several of the earlier videos to help support the project, I let people purchase having their name printed onto a brick or a tile in a few different ways, and for about half a dozen different reasons, there have been some delays on those and not all of them have yet been installed in the castle where they can be seen on camera. So now I think I'm caught up on everything and I wanna make sure that all of those printed parts get their own little bit of screen time. All right, let's start putting some pieces together. Uh, also, just real quick, I'm just gonna address, I'm wearing a wrist brace, my wrist hurts. I don't know why, it's getting better. That's it, that's all there is. <laughs> all right. to move our Christmas wreath. Find a new spot for it in a bit. Can't wait for all the comments saying that the reason my wrist hurts is because I keep pounding the pieces on with my hands. Unrelated, I promise, but I get why it seems that way. Now, while the rest of these blocks are all printing, I can surf the web, fully protected, thanks to my VPN block er the sponsor of today's video, ExpressVPN. I'm sure you guys have noticed that all websites are tracking everything we do online. And when we're on unencrypted public networks like the airports and coffee shops, there are hackers who might want to try and steal our info. Well, ExpressVPN keeps all of that private. With just one click, it encrypts your connection and reroutes your traffic through a secure server, which basically means no one can see what you're doing online. Again, it blocks your internet activity from spying eyes. <laughs> ExpressVPN protects me when I'm traveling. I don't want my identity stolen when I have a layover or something. Trust me, this is a must have. Now I gotta say, one of my favorite features is the ability to unblock content. So you can watch shows and movies from around the world without ever leaving your couch. You've got access to 105 countries. If I wanna watch a movie that's blocked here in the US, I can just change my location to where it's available. Now I can watch. They also have an optional add-on, Identity Defender. This protection feature on advanced and pro plans gets our data removed from data blockers. It alerts you when your data appears on the dark web and can ensure against data theft. Set up your own internet castle of protection. ExpressVPN is the number one rated VPN service. They've got 24 seven support, a dedicated password manager, and trusted server technology, meaning your info never gets stored in a physical location, plus even more optional benefits and add-ons. Protect yourself online, guys. Go to expressvpn.com slash NFTI or scan this QR code right now to find out how you can get up to four extra months with our sponsor ExpressVPN. It's super easy to start. Go set up your own internet activity castle. Now, let's see how all of these bricks are doing.
Okay. I'm following the instructions wrong. Gotta remove a brick. Alright, got my wreath back up. Now, a lot of you seemed to like this uh, holiday decoration last month, so I have made a new one for you. Let's check it out. Now, I had a ton of fun in the last video designing and then building that Christmas wreath, and I wanted to do something similar. So today I've designed a whole new project from scratch that goes with the wreath in terms of style and the overall look, but it goes together a bit differently. So I'm gonna do that assembly right now. I've got all of the parts printed out right here, and I just wanna show you how this works out. It's a lot more involved than last time. There's many more pieces. I've got them printed at a smaller size, but we're going to be putting this all together, and when we're done, we should have an entire tree. A short tree. like. Probably about like that. First, I have to organize all of my leaves by size, because I've got several different sizes of them, and I've just been keeping them all in the same box. Uh, first steps, I've never actually put this together before. This is exciting. All right, so I already did one, but I have two of this size base that I need. So one, two, three, four, five of these, and those go on a five spoke hub. Now, four on a hub. Now, what is the uh, Longest part of this process is we have to glue these rings onto a lot of, I think there's, there's like 76 or something of these, and we gotta glue them onto the bottoms of pretty much everything, so here we go. I used PETG for this whole project because I already had all of these colors in PETG, but you can use whatever kind of filament you want. It shouldn't really make a difference. Now several dozen pieces glued together later, it is time to begin assembly. So what we do is we start with our largest five point. We've got two of them that are this size. And we add two of our round, I don't know, buttons we'll call these, our, our round studs. And then we do the other one the same size, but we alternate the angle so that where we had a low point before, we've got a piece sticking up. Okay, and then we do another two and our next largest. Kind of just picking an angle with that one because it's going from five branches to four, so it's gonna line up more in some spots and less in others. And then that one we can make sure is rotated from the same size one below it. And we've got the two sets of that height, or that size. Buttons, All right, and then we're going to our small five branch piece, which we've got two of those as well. Again, we try and offset the angles, get better coverage of our foliage. Yeah, I like that. I printed an extra one of this top. You could use this, but I think that the taper and shape of it is actually better with just one of those at the top. Oh, look at that tree shape. It's very flexible. <laughs> All right, some of my uh, gluing jobs of the, the little studs, the round studs, I didn't quite, ugh get all of the rings seated. So we've got a little bit of natural waviness to the tree, but overall, this is the tree shape. And, oh my gosh. So like I said, this is my first time putting this together. I am actually super happy with how that has turned out. What a cutie, look at that little tree. Oh, it's fantastic. Now, as you may have seen over here on the side of the table, I'd also printed off some ornaments. Those are included in the file pack. We've got a star that just goes right up here on the top, and we've got some baubles, and I've got two versions of these. You can see I've got like the larger round stud here and the smaller round stud here. That's for the two different sizes of branches. Now, finding spots where they can actually fit without interfering whew, with the level below, a little tricky, but get one in there. There we go. Oh, I might have to go in and adjust this bobble size just a little bit <laughs> so it could fit in between the branches. Like I said, I haven't done this before. The problem I'm running into is I can't put this bobble like anywhere that I want in here because it's just gonna bump into other branches, but I'm just gonna find spots where it does fit. Ha ha! Oh, I love it. I love it. This is all of the print files. 
And if uh, you just wanna go with the printed stuff, the 3D printed parts, we can have our tree right here. I am doing one more layer to it. I got a pack of these little LED lights that are designed to go inside of balloons for parties and stuff. They're not very sophisticated. They've got a tiny battery and an LED. You pull out the strip that's keeping the batteries separated and they light up. If you wanna turn the lights off, you have to put that strip back in between the batteries. Otherwise they just go. But these are like the perfect size to just sort of sit right in the little circles. So I'm just gonna take some of these, turn them on and spread them around our Christmas tree for some twinkling lights. There we go. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, how plastic are your branches? Oh, I love it. All right, guys, all the print files for this are available for sale in our shop at Nifty Stuff. That's nfti-stuff.com. Get yours today. I try and keep the price pretty low. So it's just a fun little activity that isn't gonna break too much of the bank. Ah, what a good Christmas tree. All right, back to the castle. step all the way. This building set that I'm doing has two different sizes of arch pieces that I had to design. It's been a while since I had to come up with new pieces, but there were a couple on here as well as like another one that I've already designed that'll be for the next step. The first is this little small arch. It's a three by one little archway. Doo -doo -doo. Fits together nice and fun. I had to do some uh, tricky work with the dovetailing here because while well, this piece does intersect with it, it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom. So I didn't want just the dovetailing sticking out in the middle of nowhere. Have not actually tried putting it together though. See how this looks. Oh, look at that. Just blends right together, that's nice. There are two of these I'm putting on today and then there will be another two of them later. Just these small ones. There's four total small arches. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. Ow. Would you look at that? These span this gap. This archway shape, I think, is designed to largely mirror or mimic the arches that are in the wall panels. It's not quite the same size, but it looks very similar. Oh, definitely getting into an interesting point of the build when I can't really see or reach on top of what I'm working on anymore. I'm gonna have to get ladders involved up in here. Welcome to Ladders. Okay, now we did the small arches. It's time for the big arch, which of course has to be made in lots of different pieces. This piece is another example of how the form and function don't always perfectly match the small scale one. In the small one, the arched section of it, as it goes like this, it's all just hollow. There's no studs sticking down, but I need it to print well. So I added the studs sticking down. And so it looks a little bit different, but functionally it's almost entirely the same. And my bridge is actually going to always be in multiple pieces the same way that a lot of these are in pieces because it's just gonna use studs to attach. So kind of it's gonna be like, this is a piece. And then there's the tall arch piece and then the third mirror image of this on the other side. And they'll be able to come apart. I'm not gonna glue them or anything, but it all kind of works out the same way in the end. This is fun, I've got like little bits sticking up. The, this piece is actually slightly taller than all the rest because otherwise I would have had just this one tiny little corner triangle as its own separate piece and I didn't want to do that. So it blends in smoothly to the curve but it does stick up just a little bit proud right here. Oh. 
So yeah, the little part that sticks out a little too far, it just blends nicely into the curve of the next piece. Here we go, look at that, look at that arch. It's just such an arch, just like it's supposed to be. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so in particular, this archway piece is exciting for me. Uh, when I was first planning this project and pitching it, trying to find a 3D printer company who thought that this was as cool of a project as I think it is, I did a mock-up. I did a digital mock-up where I, you know, I measured the bricks and I calculated how big it should be and how big I should be relative to it. And in that, I photoshopped myself, trying to make it so I was standing specifically not on the bridge, but on this part behind the bridge. And I did my best guess to figure out how tall I would be. And I calculated that I would be about the height of the archway. And it uh, looks like I got pretty dang close. I, I don't I'll have to look at the picture. I'm sure we've thrown it up on screen by now to see like if I had my head actually like overlapping or just where, oh, but this is perfect. Ah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Having this archway up is also cool because it encloses the whole castle. It's now walls that go all the way around. I'm sure this is a fairly minimal wall and there's a hole the size of a person in it, but it counts as a wall. I'm counting it as a wall. Wow, <sighs> this is great. Ah, it's so exciting. It's so exciting, my arch. As arches go, it's not the strongest, but you know. Symbolically it is. In my heart, it's strong. As always, a huge thank you shout out to all of our supporters on Patreon. You guys are amazing, and if anyone out there is interested in joining my amazing supporters, the link for my Patreon is also in the description.